The newton coates formulas can be used to numerically integrate data or functions that can be evaluated at specific points. The accuracy of the integral estimates can be improved by increasing the order of the polynomial used to approximate the data. We can also improve the estimate of the integral by adding additional points to the domain, and we convert the newton coates formulas to their corresponding composite rules. Another method that increases the accuracy by increasing the number of points in the domain is to then combine integral estimates using various numbers of points using Romberg integration. As we showed, this can achieve very accurate estimates for the integral using simple methods, like the composite trapezoidal rule. But there is yet one more method that we can use to improve the accuracy of integral estimates, and that's not by adding points or by changing the function used to approximate the integral, but rather by judicious selection of exactly where the points in the domain are that are used to estimate the integral. A cartoon illustrating that is shown here, where the trapezoidal rule would ordinarily be formulated by using the endpoints of the domain. If instead we were to write a trapezoidal rule that selected some alternative points inside the domain to define the slope of the trapezoidal line, we could obtain a much better estimate for the integral. That is, the space here that is between the blue curve and the line representing the trapezoid is made up for by the space that's above the curve near the endpoints in this particular example. The trick is to be able to make the selection of exactly where those points should be. Gaussian quadrature does this. It's an integral estimate method that changes the locations of the points at which the function is approximated before calculating the integral. Gaussian quadrature is a method for selecting the locations of the points to approximate the integral that minimizes the error. Consider the problem of integrating a function f of x over the domain from minus one to one. We'll do this by evaluating f of x at n points that are called the Gauss nodes, x1, x2, through xn, and then sum them according to a weighted summation. Gaussian quadrature minimizes the error by selecting the locations, xi, and the weights, ci, for each node. To do this, we need to choose the nodes, and we also need to choose the weights for each node, the constants c sub i. If we want to use just two points, then we actually have four unknowns. We have two unknown locations or nodes, x sub i, and two unknown weights, c sub i. So we need x1, x2, c1, and c2. Since we have four unknowns, we can approximate f of x as a cubic polynomial. That is, suppose f of x has the form ax to the zero, the constant term, b times x, c times x squared, d times x cubed. Now, we rewrite each power of x as a function. f1 is the x to the zero term, f2 of x is the x term, f3 of x is the x squared term, and f4 of x is the x cubed term. Each of these is multiplied by a coefficient, a through d. Now we evaluate the integrals of each of these f of x's and compare them to the sum to find out what the weights should be. This method takes advantage of superposition, which can be applied in this case because this is a linear summation of functions of f. So the integral of f of x is the sum of the integrals of each of these terms. We can integrate the ax to the zero term, the bx term, the cx squared term, and the dx cubed term. And we want to do that by summing each of these functions of x evaluated at each of the xi. The integrals in the left-hand sides of each of these equations can all be evaluated. We know what the integral of 1, the integral of x, the integral of x squared, and the integral of x cubed are. And we're evaluating these definite integrals over the domain from minus 1 to 1 to obtain the numbers on the left-hand side here. Now we can solve these four equations for our four unknowns. The two unknown weights, c1 and c2, and the two unknown locations in the domain at which the function is evaluated, x1 and x2. You might ask what happened to our a, b, c, and d, the coefficients here? Well, the coefficients cancel because a is on both sides of this equal sign, b is on both sides of this equal sign, c is on both sides of this equal sign, and d is on both sides of this equal sign. So we can just eliminate the polynomial coefficients. Since we chose n equals 2, 
we have four degrees of freedom and we approximate f of x as a cubic polynomial to get four equations. These four equations then provide us with the four unknowns, the weights ci and, and the values of x at which we evaluate the function x sub i. In this case it turns out that both c1 and c2 are 1 and the values that the function should be evaluated at are plus or minus 1 over the square root of 3. And note that these are completely independent of the polynomial that we're approximating, that is they're independent of a, b, c, and d. We always evaluate at the same two points and we always use the same weights. If we choose these weights and these points for evaluation, then our approximation of the integral will be exact for any cubic polynomial function. Now, the function that we're evaluating may not be a cubic polynomial, but by choosing two points in the domain, we can get the same precision that we would get if we had chosen four points and used a cubic polynomial. Of course, the solution is approximate for any function that's not a cubic polynomial. So let's generalize this. If we want n points, then we need two n equations because each point has two unknowns, an unknown weight and an unknown location in the domain at which we're going to evaluate it. So we assume f of x then is a 2n minus 1th degree polynomial. But we don't have to go through the exercise of finding the weights and the locations each time we have a new function to evaluate. Rather, we can find them analytically and tabulate them. And they're tabulated for us in table 6.6 for up to n equals 6, that is 6 data points in the domain. We also don't need to tabulate these. There's a formula that we can use to compute the weights ci. The locations in the domain x are the roots of an nth degree Legendre polynomial. If you don't know what a Legendre polynomial is, you will see it in CBE 310. So you'll use this eventually. It's defined by a contour integral and the Legendre polynomial of order n always has n roots and those roots lie on the domain minus one to one. If you don't know what the Legendre polynomials are for different orders, it doesn't matter because MATLAB can evaluate the Legendre polynomial using the Legendre p command. We developed all of this assuming that the domain was from minus one to one, but what if our domain from a to b is not equal to minus one to one? Well, that's no problem. We can use the same tabulated or calculated values for our weights and our locations in the domain. We just need to rescale the x-axis. So if our real domain goes from a to b in the dummy independent variable sigma, then there's a linear transformation that converts sigma to a domain x from minus 1 to 1. And you can use the formulas shown here. The differential increment d sigma can also be related to the differential dx for the integrals. In methods chapter 6, we've covered techniques for both numerical differentiation and numerical integration. We talked about numerically differentiating discrete data using finite difference methods. The finite difference approximations can be used to differentiate xy data, and they can also be used to numerically differentiate a function if it's difficult to find the derivative of that function analytically. Then we talked about numerically integrating discrete data by approximating the area using Newton-Coates methods. The Newton-Coates methods are polynomials of increasing order that use an increasing number of points to improve the estimate. These can be modified or converted into composite rules to add additional points to the domain and thereby subdivide the domain into smaller and smaller intervals. We also talked about Romberg integration, which is a method of combining estimates of the integral to achieve higher precision. The last method of numerical integration we talked about is Gaussian quadrature. Gaussian quadrature is best used for evaluating functions at specific points in the domain and then estimating the integral based on a polynomial that fits those points. Gaussian quadrature is not nearly as useful when you have xy data sets because typically you don't have the data at precisely at the Gauss nodes where they're needed. So Gaussian quadrature is best applied when you want to numerically integrate an analytical function that you can evaluate, but that's difficult to integrate. The principle of Gaussian quadrature relies on picking the interior points and the weights to minimize the error. You can also think of Gaussian quadrature as fitting a higher order polynomial to the data than the number of data points that you're fitting to.